Trudeau liberals must be patting themselves on the back every time they pass a gas station. After all, unaffordable pump prices is precisely what they want. Now they might talk about making life more affordable for Canadians, but make no mistake, higher prices is exactly the point of the carbon tax. And as of July 1, Canadians will be paying two carbon taxes. The current carbon tax, let's call it carbon tax number one, increases the price of gasoline by 14 cents a litre, the price of diesel by 17 cents a litre, and the price of natural gas by 12 cents per cubic metre. But making it more expensive for you to drive to work or heat your home is only part of the story. That's because the costs of the carbon tax cascades throughout the entire economy. For example, when the government makes it more expensive for farmers to produce food, it makes it more expensive for you to buy that food. And the carbon tax on propane and natural gas is costing farmers uh, about a billion dollars through 2030, according to the parliamentary budget officer. Now, what about those carbon tax rebates? I can hear my neighbors in Ottawa shrieking. The Trudeau government claims that families are made better off with its carbon tax and rebate scheme, but if you think that the government can raise taxes, skim some off the top, and somehow make everyone better off with rebates, then I've got some Ocean View property in Regina to sell you. The PBO shows that that government spin relies on magic math. The carbon tax costs the average family up to $710 this year, even after the rebates. And Canadians will be paying $429 million in GST because of the tax on tax. That is because higher fuel prices mean higher sales taxes, which the government applies on its gas taxes. But guess what, folks? The pain doesn't end there. That's because on July 1, Happy Canada Day, the Trudeau government's second carbon tax takes effect. What's your present for Canada Day this year? The second carbon tax Trudeau buried in fuel regulations. Now, if producers can't meet Trudeau's requirements to reduce the carbon content of their fuels, they'll have to pay his second carbon tax. But it's not just big industry that pays the price. You'll be paying those costs through higher pump prices. By 2030, when those fuel regulation requirements are fully implemented, the second carbon tax will cost the average family up to 1100 bucks and increase the price of gasoline by 17 cents per liter. But guess who feels the most pain from Trudeau's second carbon tax? The government's own number crunchers have the answer. Trudeau's second carbon tax will, quote, disproportionately impact lower and middle income households, as well as households currently experiencing energy poverty. That will especially harm single mothers and seniors living on fixed income, according to the government's own analysis. And here's the kicker. There are no rebates with Trudeau's second carbon tax and is being layered on top of his current carbon tax. So by 2030, Trudeau's two carbon taxes will increase the price of gasoline by about 55 cents a liter and cost the average family more than $2,000 annually. More than $2,000 every single year. Now, can your family afford to pay $2,000 every year for useless carbon taxes that don't do anything for the environment? Of course not. And Canadians could pay 12 different carbon taxes to the Trudeau government, and it still wouldn't do anything for the environment. Why? Carbon taxes don't cut emissions, they cut family budgets. Here's why. Fueling up a car with gasoline, heating homes and businesses with natural gas, drying grain with propane, or filling up the big rig truck with diesel are necessities for countless Canadians. So instead of escaping the punishment of a carbon tax, Canadians, many of them, are forced to cut back elsewhere, like socking away less money for their kids' university education. So BC had the highest carbon tax in Canada for years, and emissions continued to go up. Nova Scotia, in stark contrast, had the lowest carbon tax in Canada, and they had cut emissions by 36% since 2005. But here's the thing. The Trudeau government 
could grind Canada's industries into a screeching halt and it still do, wouldn't do anything other than cause a lot of pain for Canadians. That's because making it more expensive for Canadians to fill their grocery carts or their minivans with fuel won't do anything to reduce emissions in China. And Trudeau's tax is especially self-defeating when more than three quarters of countries don't have a national carbon tax. As of July 1, Canada won't have one carbon tax, but will have two carbon taxes. The United States, Russia, and India account for a quarter of global emissions. None of those countries have a national carbon tax, and good luck selling one to Texans. So what's the point of these carbon taxes? It's not to help the environment. If that was the objective, then we would be doing everything that we have in our power to make sure that Canadian resources are displacing dirtier forms of energy that's being consumed and produced around the world. But make no mistake about it, the carbon tax does have a point, it does have an objective. It lets politicians, academics, the Zoom class, people living in big cities by their big offices feel good about themselves while downloading the costs onto other Canadians. Essentially, live the way we want you to or pay up.